This is Tony Gonzalez from Made in Metal talking to Logan Mader, who is going to release the new Once Human CD, the third CD, the next February 2020, 2022. Logan, how are you? Good, man. How you doing? Perfect. You have a long story as a guitar player and producer, but I want to start in 2019 when you were invited to John Machine Head for Burn My Eyes anniversary tour. How was the experience? This was amazing. Um, nothing but just amazing all the way through. <clears throat> um, yeah, it was just like really, really good vibes from everybody on the on the whole in the whole band and on the crew from Raw. We were just we were celebrating something that was really special. You know, Burn My Eyes was made a big impact in the world of metal and was a big impact on my life and launched the whole career from Machine Head. And so it was really cool to be able to go back and kind of 25 years later and relive those great moments that I was so lucky to experience in the first place. And then to do it now or recently do that <clears throat> again, it's not something that most people get to experience, you know? You know, you, you, if you're lucky enough to have that moment in, in, the, in the first place, that's great. But to be able to like <laughs> go back 25 years later and relive it for a minute, even though, and it was even bigger because Machine Head's grown over the decades to a bigger band. So the, <clears throat> the production was bigger than what we had back in the day. The crew was bigger. The whole thing was bigger, you know? So in that respect, it was kind of like, whoa, this is pretty surreal for me. It was really amazing. As a result of uh, that situation, can we say that uh, this is the consequence of uh, Rob Flynn uh, playing with One's Human Alive in, in San Francisco last, last October, or Flynn in your new CD singing in Deadlock? The relationship between me and Rob got stronger and better over the course of the Burn My Eyes anniversary tour. I mean, Yeah, we yes. had a great time together. It was it was good times. It was a celebration the whole way through. But I've been friends with him for many years before, before uh, prior to this. You know, the fact that he did a guest vocal on the song "Deadlock" with Once Human, I think it stands. I mean, it stands alone on that he loved the song and he was inspired to be a part of it. You know, I mean, yeah, reconnecting with him more so like helped. I'm sure, but still, if he didn't like the song, he wasn't he wasn't going to be a part of it. You know. <laughs> and then yeah when we came through san francisco on the recent tour with cradle of filth i invited him to come out and do the song with us and he was happy to do it that was the first time he had been on stage since you know pa pandemic so it was a year and a half he said it felt really good to get on stage again and uh, it was great to see him and we went you know we hung out the whole whole night and it was good vibes when he calls you to get into Matching Head again, were you working on a Scar Weaver or not yet? First, I called him. Let me tell you the story. Because like in 2018, I, I texted him and I was like, you know, Rob, the 25th anniversary of Burn My Eyes is coming up. What do you think about like putting that band back, that lineup together and going and out and doing it? And he was reluctant. He was like, yeah, anything is possible. You said something like anything is possible but he didn't really see that it would fit into the schedule because that was during the time Catharsis was touring and it was prior to Dave and Phil leaving Machine Head. They were still in the band. And I think he didn't, I don't think anyone knew that that was going to happen, that, that there was a little bit unexpected that they all of a sudden left the band. <clears throat> in uh, <clears throat> the end of 2018, they left the band, right? Um, and I called him like prior to that. <laughs> and, then, and he said, well, maybe the 30 year anniversary, maybe we'll do it on the 30. I was like, nah, dude. I was like, okay, but 25 is cooler. It's the, it's a big milestone, the 25th, the silver anniversary. Seems like a cooler than, than 30th, but also I was anxious. I wanted to do it. Um, but you know, so then <laughs> when Dave and Phil announced that they were leaving the band, I think it was November, 2018, end of, end of 2018, And I texted him right away, like, hey, how about that? <laughs> how about that idea now? <laughs> you know, not, you know, I, I think it's kind of funny now, but the opportunity presented itself like a realistic idea. Now he didn't have all of a sudden he's got to regroup and, you know, re reestablish. You know, I mean, honestly, 
it's machine head is is rob plant from the very beginning he created he's the leader he's the front man he's the main songwriter he, he can do that band and he's proved it over and over again he can do that band with almost anyone if they're good if they play the role of the moving parts and the beat be in the band with him it'll work people love it still <laughs> so but that was just like a good timing to for him and for everyone to for him to take a break from instead of jumping right into getting a new new guitar player a new drummer get logan and chris and celebrate burn my eyes because it's 25 years old now let's go out and do that and we did it and it killed it it was really successful tour everywhere we went up to up to 5,000 capacity rooms and a sell out, almost sold out every night and, and then when it was officially announced I got really excited and I went up to Oakland and started doing pre-production and we re-recorded burn my eyes you know in this live in the studio for like the, the vinyl release uh, that led me into last all doing a little collaboration with machine head I did a a little bit of a guitar writing and I performed on the song My Hands Are Empty, which came out as a single during um, when it came out, but it came out like during pandemic after the tour. Um, and that was my first time collaborating with Rob in about 20 years. So that was cool. And then during, you know, a little bit later, Deadlock, we hit him up for, for Deadlock and that turned out really awesome as well. And he was in the video. And so, yeah, all good vibes. I am curious to know how did you meet Lauren Hart? But my question is, did you see first the woman or did you hear her first? Okay, Monty Connor introduced me to her. Not, not personally, he said, hey, Logan, check out this girl. She's a guitar player. I thought of you when this came across my desk and thought maybe you want to do a production deal with her or work with her as a producer and a co-writer. So he sent me a video where I saw her uh, playing guitar. So I heard a little bit of music and saw her on a video clip for the first time that I laid eyes on her. And then I, I thought it was interesting. So I reached out to her and she came up to my studio for a meeting. We had a click vibe, creative vibe and just energy vibe. And so we started working together and I was originally just going to be a producer and maybe co-writer and help her put a band together, you know, because I've done that a bunch of times in the past. And that's why Monty sent it to me because he knows that I've, I've done that. You know, he's even signed some of the bands that I, or one of the bands that I did that with where I developed a new band that's unheard of and do like album production and help develop their whole vibe and then try to shop it to get a record deal. And I've done that a few times. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of work to, to do those kind of things, but I, I like it. It's, it's fulfilling, creatively fulfilling. And it, if you do get that record deal, then it feels like a really good sense of accomplishment. You're like, yeah, I believe in this artist. I did development. And you don't see a lot of companies doing development with a new artist. It's like, you got to be proven these days. If you want to get a record deal, you got to have already toured the world. You got to have already released albums and already have like tons of uh, views and listens and social media following and all these things built up on your own to even get a record deal most of the time these days. So. It was sort of a traditional developing type mentality that I that I like, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've done it before. But anyway, so yeah, so that's how I met Lauren, and uh, we vibed, and then kind of she con she con convinced me to play in this thing that we were creating, like pretty early on. And at that point, I was really in the studio only. I after touring with Soulfly and a little bit with Medication, I just went in studios and started make, making records, and that was my life studio guy and I was happy doing it I really loved it but I did miss playing and touring and stuff I just I never really had the opportunity or found the right place to try and do it again so so yeah I was like okay I'll do it and we had we vibed and um I'm glad I made that decision because it got me back into touring and stuff and playing live again and uh, it's an important part of my life so I do that now I do both. I still do album productions and mixing and studio work, but I also do, you know, live stuff like with Once Human and like with Once Machine Head and who knows what else I'll play with. Yes, but I asked you before because maybe when I see the woman, if you see the woman and you don't listen to her, you think this voice is very, very, very impressive. I check. Uh, the last uh, single called Arrival. Man, this woman sings very good. And not only the growl parts, the clear part are really strong. Yeah, 
Yes. Yeah, she's developed as a vocalist over the years quite a lot, and it shows on Cold Arrival. It shows on the new album a lot new new characters, new vocal abilities that she's able to kill with a lot of power. Um, but she came to me as a guitar player, and I was like, I think you can be a front woman. I don't know why. I just I had a feeling like you're going to sing. And I told her you're going to sing. And she didn't want to sing clean vocals at all, but she could growl. And so I'm like, okay, I knew you, you have a voice. So she had her growling voice and I pushed her into that role right from the beginning to be the front woman. And so over the course of a few albums, she's developed uh, her vocal abilities and she's just by basically by doing it, you get better by doing it. It's like working out your muscles, you get bigger, you get stronger. And, you know, so the, over the, and then she got in Camelot and did a guest vocal on the band Camelot. And so yes. she got to do a whole world tour with them. And that gave her a lot more experience plus touring with Once Human. And then doing a couple of things like some vocal training with Melissa Cross. So she, so she applied herself and put a lot of effort into in, you know, improving her vocal abilities and expanding her, her array of you know, like characters that she can do with her voice and do them believably with a lot of passion and emotion. And so yeah she's really gotten to a, a, a peak uh right now like who knows where else she can go from there but she's grown a lot as a vocalist over the last seven years today i checked your website and i saw that each single has a special cover design a special drawing a special photograph apart from the videos so when the cd will release can we get an special edition with a photograph uh, the bootleg a big booklet or something like that yeah we thought we just thought we were releasing a lot of singles i thought it's cool to give each single a cover you know because these days it's kind of like the world goes song by song in a yeah. band you know so single by single it's important to give a look to to each single that comes out maybe even make t-shirts off of it and stuff so we've done that so but yeah the album's coming february 11th to 2022 211.22. And uh, yeah, it's got, we have a vinyl edition, special edition vinyl coming as well, with some different stuff in there. You are like me, Logan. So we need to think uh, 2022 because we are not sure in what year we are. Because I think that I lost a year in my life. <laughs> And then you see, so it's 2021, 2022. Yes, February 2022. So uh, yeah. as you're going, to have some plans for Europe in 2022? I hope so. We'll have to see. It's still, everything is still kind of uncertain in the world right now. But yeah, we all lost a year and a half or whatever because of circumstances. But uh, I mean, it's starting to get back to normal, I guess. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I would love to. I definitely foresee going back to Europe at some point. Yes. By the way, I read that Dillon have been endorsed by Axis Percussion. Give him my congratulations mm -hmm. for this. Yeah, yeah, he's deserved it. He's an amazing drummer. Really, yes. really good. I think he is. When I listen to songs, <clears throat> sorry, for example, Dead Lock to me was really very different than Only in Death and Cold Arrival. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because uh, Flynn is singing in the song or the song was really different. Uh, and tell me, Logan, what can we find in the CD apart from these songs? The CD is uh, trending more to the lock or more to a uh, call arrival? I would say it leans a little more towards cold arrival or somewhere in between. Um, Yeah, Deadlock is the result of the collaboration on on to a to a large degree, you know, with Rob. It was it was sort of a different vibe for us. Um, yeah, more like on the Cold Arrival. There's a lot of really heavy, brutal, ugly parts on this this new album that are just disgusting and just brutal as hell. And then there's also some really really beautiful like Only in Death type melodic stuff and powerful melodic as well. So. Maybe what it was my imagination. But to me, the lock have a little of soul fly, but I think that not because the, the course of your band is nothing to do with soul fly. Yeah, I, I think in it has a groove, like that song has a bit of a, almost like a new metal kind of a groove to it, which is a slower kind of bouncy, 
groove that's yeah. the feel of it that you i know that's why probably you think that the soul fly connection or something but yeah that's there was a little that wasn't a little different than the others uh, logan this is basically my question mm -hmm. uh, if you want to say something to the spanish audience this is your moment hola <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys, man. Look forward to coming back to Spain. It's a great country. I miss it. And uh, yeah, thanks for the interview. Yes, we miss you too. We hope to see you next year here. Hell yeah. Yes. It was Tony Gonzalez from Made in Metal talking to Logan Mader. So who is going to release the third once human CD called, called I... Doesn't scar weaver yes perfect <laughs> a scar weaver okay yeah. bye 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 have a good one you too bye <laughs>